Hello everyone, I'm Yang Tao from Tsinghua University, and I'm happy to be here so I can show you our latest works on considerations for evaluating futuristics, integrated space, and terrestrial networks. And this is a joint work by professors and students from Tsinghua University, and the other co-authors can, uh, cannot attend today's conference, so I'm gonna represent them to give this presentation. Uh, here are the key points of today's presentation. First, I will give you an introduction of the background. As we know, constellation-based space and terrestrial networks are gaining increasing popularity over the years. Corporations from the space industry are sparing no effort to launch their own satellites. For example, more than 3,000 satellites have, have already been emitted by Starlink alone. And other companies like Telesat, Amazon Kuiper are also in parallel development. And these emerging satellites can be equipped with high-speed links for inter-satellite communications. And a huge number of regularly distributed and connected satellites form a so-called delta constellation. Besides, if equipped with radio ground satellite links, the satellites could get connected to ground facilities, and traffic data through the satellite transmissions can finally land to ground internet. And this is what we call an integrated space and terrestrial networks, aka ISTN. So it is foreseeable that in the near future, such integrated, space, such integrated networks will make it easier to provide remote services, education, internet access in the air, and so on. We see ISTN is definitely under a continuous development. And different from terrestrial networks, low Earth orbit satellites have the inherent high mobility that is different from terrestrial networks and GEO satellites. A fixed connection only lasts three minutes on average. So the entire network topology is no longer static, but changes frequently, making the interconnections more complex. And so it's intuitive for developers and academics to study how the futuristic ISTN should be built and developed. For example, how to design a suitable ground satellite connection method to provide a more stable and low latency quality. But the key problem is, how can researchers build an experimental network environment to test and assess their new thoughts? So let's first take a look at the requirements for such an experimentation tools. Above all, since satellites are moving spatially and temporally, realism should be guaranteed. And cons constellation consistency is the first part of it. It means the physical features like trajectories or connections should be accurately modeled and temporarily updated from the, from the network and system perspective. The protocols and data transmission running on the nodes should also be properly simulated, namely system and networking stack realism. Then flex flexibility and scalability shows shows uh, means the network scale and simulated ground stations should be configurable as the users prefer. So, so traditional tra tra typically traditional approaches fall into three categories. The first type is real low Earth orbit satellites or other available platforms. Starlink has started its initial services in certain regions with more than a million subscribers up to now. But directly manip manipulating or inspecting such a live ne network might be typical, uh, technically and economically difficult for us. Real realistic mega constellations are still under a rapid uh, involvement and under construction, so it's not easy in practice to flexibly modify the network structure for arbitrary analysis. Another common kind that comes to our minds are simulators. For example, STK and GMAT are representative orbit analysis tools for astronautics, but they lack the support for network simulation. On the other hand, NS3 do not consider satellite treats. So, uh, and Hypatia and Starperf are emergent simulators for ISTN, 
but such discrete event-based simulators have a high abstraction level, making it unrealistic to measure system level overhead or influences. The last one is emulators like Mininet. Other emulators like Diecast or Atlan uses containers or virtual machines for emulation. The protocol stack consistency could be promised, but it's difficult for them to support large-scale and dynamic emulations for mega constellations. So none of the existing approaches satisfy realism and flexibility at the same time. But so we rephrase our earlier question of, can we develop an experimental tool that incorporates both simulators and emulators to achieve realism and flexibility for large scales and low cost usage? And the answer is yes. Then let's take a deeper look at StarryNet. The design point is briefly described as shown in this figure. We just want to have a data-driven and hybrid environment because the public data is shared by the satellite ecosystem and community, then we can model an analysis to exploit the virtual nodes. And this figure shows our system architecture. It consists of mainly four components, a constellation observer, a constellation synchronizer, a constellation orchestrator, and a unified abstraction. The constellation observer is in charge of crowdsourcing approach. It collects orbit satellite information, as well as ground station or user statistics and measurement results. It maintains databases to support and guide the construction of our constellations. And the synchronizer is made up of several models with respect to constellation characteristics and network behaviors. Based on real information from the constellation observer, it accordingly generates a scalable virtual network net presentation. And the orchestrator is our core component. It is a container-based emulation to construct an ISTN environment upon a number of physical machines, depending on the constellation size. During emulation, it, accordingly, it automatically modifies the link handovers and link states. Apart from that, it assigns the computation and network capability on each emulated node according to the results from the synchronizer. In a multi-machine situation, for example, we want to emulate one orbit per machine, but the machines probably only have extra one or two physical interfaces. So the satellites of the two orbits have a shared link, which is an incorrect topology. We, we use VLAN to achieve traffic isolation. So each satellite is only connected to its logical neighbors, and thus the network topology across the machines is maintained. And the last part is our APIs. They expose this underlying geographical satellite information to user programs, and users can use our API to construct an entire experiment. Here I show how to do this in three steps. Uh, first, the researcher writes a self-defined program using our API. Then the researcher manually prepares a configuration file describing the orbital information and ground station distributions and so on. Finally, the researcher runs a bunch of shell commands to create the experiment and start running. So that's really easy for the users to do that. And the last part is our performance evaluation. To promise the fidelity of our experiments, we use Docker, OpenV Switch, and TC to construct the network. And the emulations are implemented on our test bed, consisting of R740 servers. And the information used for modeling comes from open data. We evaluate the ability to satisfy various experimental requirements and the experimental fidelity and show some case studies to demonstrate the usage of StarryNet. To demonstrate the emulation ability of StarryNet, we use this figure to show that StarryNet is able to flexibly create a user-defined constellation, scaling from 300 to more than 4,000. And the environment setup and system overhead is also calculated here. 
The total creation time lasts only a few minutes, and the average CPU and memory overhead consumed on each machine is also documented here. So we believe that uh, StarryNet is able to support mega constellation emulation with self-defined configuration. For fidelity, we first compare StarryNet with live Starlink measurement and other two simulations under the same bent pipe topology and calculate their end-to-end -end latency and link throughputs. What I mean by bent pipe is that each satellite directly receives the data from the ground, ground uh, user terminal and sends it to the connected ground station just like a switch. So as expected, StarryNet is more similar to live measurement. And this is because StarryNet jointly uses model calculation, data-driven calibration, and real networking. We also compare StarryNet when there are inter-satellite links and shortest path routing. With inter-satellite links, the satellites form a grid network. And with the shortest path routing, like OSPF, the, the transmission path is made up of several hopes. And from the CDF figure, end-to-end -end latency in StarryNet is slightly higher than the two simulators. This is because StarryNet, StarryNet incorporates realistic system level overhead, while simulators only consider transmission latency. And in an another analysis, since there are research intentions to study onboard photo processing and orbital edge computing. The researchers may need to conduct their exper experiments on satellite hardwares of various cap computation abil abilities. And StarryNet is able to flexibly adjust the computation capability on each emulated node to satisfy the experimental requirements. Here, we use CPU core mark to show that StarryNet can mimic similar computation cap ability to Raspberry Pi and Jetson that are already used in real satellite missions. For case studies, we try to show the ex experimental ability of StarryNet. For example, we possibly want to see the performance of different space ground connection methodologies. A sender might only use a satellite for last mile transmission, where most of the transmission is carried by terrestrial networks. Another way is to use bent pipe for each hope. And if we have inter-satellite links, the sender can use the inter-satellite links through ground stations first. A more straightforward way is to directly get connected to satellites using the user terminal. And in the last two scenarios, routing, routing protocols like OSPF is used. Then we can send some traffic from the sender to the receiver and get some information like transmission latency. So keeping these four methods in mind, we use StarryNet to get the performances. Uh, firstly, we break down the latency along the transmission path. We observe that the inter-satellite links reduces the overall latency. And we also calculate the average end-to-end -end reachability. This is calculated simply by testing how much time the ends can send traffic data to each other under the topology and routing. We see uh, the reachability varies a lot. This is because some methods highly rely on ground stations, but the ground stations are distributed unevenly. And the frequent link handovers between ground stations and satellites make the routing unstable, so it needs time to recover reach. We then compare their addressing and costs, and the costs come from different parts like ground stations, terminals, or uh, the links. And to draw a conclusion from these results, we believe there is, there is no perfect approach yet. And through this case, StarryNet supports uh, routing and data transmission for mega constellations. In our another case, StarryNet enables researchers to conduct hardware in the loop testing. Here is a 3U CubeSat prototype equipped with low power processor, which could serve as a single satellite. 
And if we connect the prototype to the R740 server, together we can create a starting share one in, uh, the entire network. We can in inject some traffic data and use a power monitor to measure the satellite prototype. Here, we monitor the power consumptions under different states. So through this case, we believe we believe that StarryNet is able to create a hybrid environment. Uh, in conclusion, our paper proved that current methods are far from satisfaction for researchers to construct their experiments. And our StarryNet achieves realism, flexibility, and no cost usage. And our evaluation re results show that StarryNet can promise high fidelity for performances and able to support various experiment requirements. So in the future, we hope more researchers could join the central network community and we will update our models and codes. In, uh, uh, we will always continue to update our codes. Thank you. And I'm happy to take your questions.